Hey guys, welcome back to Motorcycle Maintenance Channel. Today on this episode, we're going to show you how to replace your rear wheel on this Kawasaki C900 motorcycle. First thing we got to do, guys, is remove the cotter pin. These Kawasaki's come with cotter pins. And the rear axle nut. So we got to straighten it out. Pinch it together. Pinch it together and pull it out. Okay, now we gotta find the socket to take that nut off. We have to un we have to unscrew it as well as hold the axle nut on the other side still. So this on this Kawasaki Z900, it uses a 27 millimeter socket on the rear axle. And I don't have a 27 millimeter socket, but I have a 28. So what we're going to do is just put it on this little piece of duct tape like this. And then wrap our 28 around it. And then on the other side, it's a, we're just using a 7 8 to hold it still. And then we'll untighten it. And when we put it back on there, we'll find a 27 millimeter. But what that does, it just allows us not to strip out um, our buddy's axle nut. There we go. Looks pristine still. All right. So now we're just going to remove the axle. from the wheel. Oh. There we go. Place that on that side. This here. All right, now I'm gonna just take the caliper. Oh, try to take it off. Before we do that, we'll just try to take the chain off. <laughs> All right, there's the chain. It's out of the way. And there's our caliper. All right, and we'll just let the caliper rest here on the swing arm. And she's ready to go. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the spacers out because you don't want to take the tire to the tire shop or the wheel to the tire shop, excuse me, with the spacers in it. Um, because they could lose them. <laughs> so we'll just leave them here and we'll take the, we'll take the wheel separately from the spacers. Does this not come out? That would be the first one. There it goes. Take the sprocket out as well. We'll put the spacer in there so we know that this goes on the sprocket side. And we'll remove the cush drive. And it's ready to take to the tire shop of your choosing so that they can put a brand new tire on there. Thanks guys. Stay tuned and watch us put this back on. All right guys, we are back. Well, well Delta Tango is back from Moto Mummy and I recommend it, he got Q3 tires, but they were out and gave him S22s instead, which I think is a great tire as well. I personally like Q3s, so. but um, 
he's back and now we're gonna put his tire or his wheel back in his motorcycle so we got our cush drive in this is a cush drive it goes in like this little dimples go facing out flat side faces in and then we get the sprocket and we just found out earlier that th there's a little this actually comes out make sure that, that stays in the sprocket um, on the center of the sprocket like that and then there, here's the spacer we want to make sure our spacer remains in there as well so there's the spacer and we'll just fit the sp sprocket back on the wheel I'm just going to lay it down so that I could fully push it down there we go and it should just sit flush in there like that so, have this. Um, we're going to put that where it goes. Here, remove the rotor. So I'll just knock it on the ground. Go. Slide the pads around the rotor in the back. Just kind of leave it there for right now. Um, have our chain. We'll wrap the chain around the sprocket. It helps to kind of rotate the chain or rotate the tire to get the chain all the way seated So, it's more or less on there. Oop, forgot our spacer, so not a big deal. But the spacer over here goes in the rotor like that. Make sure it stays on there. Oh, put the spacer back. There we go. All right, so there's a little groove that sticks out of the swing arm. You're going to want to make sure that the caliper rests on that groove. Spacer fell out. <laughs> there we go. Chains on. Put the spacer back in. I'll put a little grease on the spacer this time. Sometimes the grease helps hold it in there without so it doesn't fall out. Sometimes. Okay. 
the rotor is not where it should be. So you can see there's a, you want to get the camera, you can see there's a block of aluminum that just sticks outside of the swing arm. And that block has to go right here and slide between this groove here. And that kind of locks the rotor into place. So that's what we're kind of struggling with on this side. But I think we got it there. Oops. Is there other spacer? Oh, there you go. All right. Now we're just going to put a little bit of grease on our shaft here. So that when we do this next time, it comes out. Doesn't really need that much grease. Just a light coating of it. Stuff gets everywhere. All right. So this is going to actually come in from this side, from the caliper side. Oops. We get this keyboard. All right, I like to use a skateboard because it's shaped good. You can use a two by four for this too. It just kind of helps lift the back end of the bike up. And I lost the spacer. Caliper's where we want it. See else is where we want it. Let's push this in. And you do have to wrestle with it. 
Tire, tires are kind of physical. There we go. So take this washer. You want these lines on the block to go up and down because they correlate to the little notches on the swing arm back here. And it kind of tells you how tight or loose your chain is on one side or the other. Yes. Right. And then a little twenty seven millimeter axle nut. And then when you have it like this, you want to make sure, do one more check, make sure everything is where it needs to be. The, the caliper is locked into that little slot up there. So you shake it, it doesn't go anywhere. The spacer's here. Um, the spacer's on this side as well. You don't want to not have those spacers in because you'll have a bad time. And so on this side, we use a 27 millimeter. On this side, we're using a 7 8. Just kind of tighten it up a little bit. Now, it's the same as the front um, 80 foot pounds of torque, 108 Newton meters. So, let's put this here. Hold this one over here. And then put 80 newton meters or 80 foot pounds of torque on it, 108 newton meters. I guess if we're getting technical, 79.7 pounds. That's about 80 foot pounds there. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it just a little bit more because I need to be, the, the hole needs to come out of this crown nut so that I can fit the cotter pin through it. There we go. Here's our cotter pin. We're just gonna slide it through the crown nut like that. Perfect. Some needle nose spice grips anyways. And just kind of hold it there. Push one cotter pin that way. Delta, Delta Tango says I'm rough with his bike. He is showing me a clip where I slipped off of his one of the nuts, slipped a wrench off of one of his nuts. I told him I'm not Jesus. Can't be perfect. I'm pretty damn close. Anyways, that's how you install a rear wheel on a Kawasaki Z900. Stay out of the grease, everybody.